while on vacation is go hiking. We love to visit the national parks, and then one of the best ways to see the national parks is certainly to get out into the park on the hiking trails around those parks. One of the challenges of hiking is certainly the distance, the terrain, and the elevation, but also finding the, the way. Certainly the trails are well marked in most national parks, but the challenge is knowing how far you've gone and what you're doing. In some park information, the, uh, you'll find conflicting information about certain trails. For example, this last summer, we were in North Cascades National Park and we took what was known as the Maple Pass Loop. It's one of the most famous hikes in the park and it was stunning, it was beautiful, it was amazing. But in some of the trail information, it said that the trail was 6.7 miles long. In other trail information, it said that it was 7.2 miles long. Well, by the end, you don't really know. It feels like even longer than that. After going up and down and uh, navigating over rocks and roots and all the things on the trail that make it challenging. My friends, the reason I tell you about the experience of hiking is that today we continue series 66 as we get closer to the end of the Old Testament. Today we're going to look at the prophet Zechariah that comes in the second to last book in the Old Testament. Zechariah was a unique prophet. He was actually born in exile in Babylon and he came back with the Israelites after uh, coming back from Babylon and he was involved in talking about and uh, encouraging the rebuilding of the city of Jerusalem and the establishment of God's work there in the place. Um, I want to re read for you a couple of short passages, short verses from the book of Zechariah, chapter 2, verses 1 through uh, 4, 1 through 5. It says this, Then I looked up, and there before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, Where are you going? He answered me, to measure Jerusalem, to find out how wide and how long it is. Then the angel who was speaking to me left, and another angel came to meet him and said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls because of the great number of men and livestock in it, and I myself will be the wall of fire around it, declares the Lord, and I will be its glory within. Now, of course, this uh, passage is talking about the reconstruction of what used to be. Before the captivity, Jerusalem was a strong fortified city with a large wall all the way around it. And we've talked about that in a few times that we've spoken about Nehemiah. But here, the city had been destroyed completely by the Babylonians. And as the people of Israel came back, they were trying to uh, rebuild and reestablish the city as it had been. Now, I think the lesson for us today is that certainly there are moments and times in our lives when we are wrecked, when our lives are destroyed by circumstance and difficulty, questions, doubts, and fear. And we have a tempta temptation to go back and rebuild it as it was. But what God says here in Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5 is really important. He says that I will be the wall around the city. I will be its light. I will be its glory without and within. The man was trying to measure the city to see how big and how wide and how long it was. But really God was saying, you're limiting my power. You're limiting what I can and will do for Jerusalem. And I wonder how often we do that too. How often we say that God's love and God's grace and God's goodness in our lives is only so deep, only so wide. But God wants us to know that it is expansive, that it goes well beyond whatever we could ask, hope, or imagine. And we need to remember the words of God, that he is here to show us the way, the truth, and the life. And no matter how far and how long we go on the path, regardless of the information we have, God goes with us and helps us go to the end. And along the way, just like hiking in national parks, we see some tremendous things and are able to thank God for the glory and the grace that he has created. I hope that you can get out and enjoy God's world, but also I hope that God will show you his expansive love in his heart and in his life. And as always, I encourage you to continue to engage in the Bible as you, you focus not only on these devotions, but in your own reading, 
And this week, of course, uh, I encourage you to look at the book of Zechariah. I hope you have a great day, and I hope this blesses you in this day. In Jesus' name, amen.